Welcome to another tutorial video. As you can see, we're going to be discussing liquidity ratios here, which is more of a credit analyst topic, but which also does come up in banking and corporate finance. So there are a few components. I will be sharing the extracts of this company, Illinois Toolworks and their filings. We'll also be going through some Excel exercises and I will show you where the calculations come from. Also, before we get started, I do want to mention quickly that we are running a Black Friday slash Cyber Monday slash Cyber Week sale. You can get all of our courses for about $200 off the normal price and save over $1,000 if you purchase them all separately. You can go to breakingintowallstreet.com courses or just follow this URL on screen or under the video where I'm going to pin it or just search for BIWS courses. It expires on Friday, December 1st. So this Friday at 11.59 p.m. New York time. We normally only run the cell once a year and it ends right at 11.59 p.m. on this Friday. Now back to liquidity ratios. So people in corporate finance roles often focus on valuation and growth and profit margins when they're analyzing businesses. But with lenders and suppliers and other counterparties, they're very focused on the downside risk. And one of the best ways of measuring a company's downside risk is to look at its liquidity ratios to measure just how well it can cover its short-term obligations. So the plan for this tutorial is to focus on the original liquidity ratios first, the top three ones there. Then we will go into the unofficial liquidity ratios, and then we will do some analysis in real life for Illinois Toolworks and see what kind of conclusions we can come to based on their historical liquidity ratios. Let's start with the top three original liquidity ratios. The first one is the current ratio defined as current assets over current liabilities. Now here, I have pulled in some of the numbers for Illinois Toolworks, but if you go in their filings and the PDF I've created, you can go to the balance sheet and see where all these numbers are coming from. To calculate this one, we simply go down and we take the company's current assets and then we divide by their current liabilities and it is 1.4X in this case. Essentially, the current ratio tells you how easily the company could repay its short-term obligations with its short-term assets, including assets that are less liquid. So for example, cash is obviously liquid, so they could easily use this to repay some of the short-term debt, but something like inventory is much less liquid. They're probably going to have to sell this to customers and go through the delivery and billing process and all that. So this is much harder to turn to cash than actual cash or even something like accounts receivable. Another original liquidity ratio is the quick ratio, which is defined as cash and cash equivalents plus accounts receivable divided by current liabilities. So for this one, we can go and take the cash and the accounts receivable and then divide by the current liabilities right here. It comes out to 0.9x. This one is telling us if we consider only the company's most liquid assets, such as cash and AR, how well can it repay its short-term obligations? And in this case, the conclusion is that they could repay most of the short-term obligations, but not quite everything because it is below the 1x level. And then one final liquidity ratio is called the cash ratio, which is the cash and cash equivalents divided by the current liabilities. The calculation here is that we go in and take the cash number and divide by the current liabilities, it comes out to 0.2x. They cannot repay very much of their short-term obligations using just their cash balance. The meaning here is that if we consider the short-term obligations and we pretend the company cannot sell assets or borrow more or collect owed customer payments, how well could it actually repay those short-term obligations if we assume it cannot take any of these actions? Normally with these ratios, you wanna look at the trends over time and see how they've changed over many years or a decade, or even how they've changed from quarter to quarter over a relatively long period. And in forecasts, you wanna see how they might change if there's a recession or a downturn or some other disturbance. Now, in addition to these official liquidity ratios, there are unofficial liquidity ratios as well. One of these is working capital divided by revenue. This is not liquidity directly, but it does measure how risky or inefficient a company is. To calculate this, you wanna start with the company's working capital. Now I've highlighted the specific line items that I've used to calculate this in the filing right here. In short, I'm only considering operational items, and so I'm ignoring cash and debt for this calculation, but that's the basic idea, and I've laid it out right here. To calculate this, you can take the working capital and then divide by the revenue right here, and it comes out to about 19%. This tells you how much cash the company has to tie up in items that are necessary for its everyday operations, such as inventory and accounts receivable, prepaid expenses, 
and then it subtracts out the amounts that are owed to other parties. And so if a company has a higher percentage here, it means that it's not quite as efficient as a company with a lower percentage because that company with the lower percentage doesn't need to keep quite as much cash tied up in these items to run the everyday business. Then there's also the change in working capital divided by the change in revenue. This tells you how much the company needs to reinvest in its operations in order to fund its future growth, or in this case, to fund its historical growth since we're looking at it on a historical basis. To calculate this one, first we need the change in working capital. And to calculate this, you always wanna start with the old number and then subtract the new number, at least when you're looking at this for this type of financial statement analysis. So we can do this, and we might as well add it in for the historical years as well. And then for the change in working capital as a percent of the change in revenue, we can take this, and then we can take the new revenue number and subtract the old revenue number, and we get to negative 37% like that. Now for the full interpretation of this and what the change in working capital means, I recommend looking at our change in working capital tutorial. We have a detailed video that goes through all of this and the meaning of working capital and everything related to that. So take a look at it. But in short, this number means that the company has to spend a fair amount to fund its future growth. And we would expect this for a manufacturing company or a retailer like this firm. There are also a couple of liquidity ratios or unofficial liquidity ratios related to debt and cash and equity, such as net debt, which is defined as debt minus cash, debt over total capital, which is debt divided by debt plus equity in the balance sheet, and then net debt divided by net capital, which is debt minus cash divided by debt plus equity minus cash. Let's go in and make these calculations. So for net debt, we wanna take the total debt number and subtract the cash number. For total capital, we wanna take our debt and then add our equity on the balance sheet. So not the company's market cap or equity value, but the book value of this number. In other words, if you go to their balance sheet, we wanna take the stockholder's equity number down here. Technically, we should leave out the non-controlling interest, but it doesn't matter. It's one, it's insignificant, so I'm just not bothering with it here. Let's copy these across. And then for net capital, we take total capital and then subtract the cash balance right here. And then to calculate these numbers. So net debt, we already have above. This is just the debt minus the cash. Debt divided by total capital, we take our total debt and divide by our total capital. And then net debt divided by net capital, we take our net debt and divide by our net capital. So all these metrics are telling you how well the company can service its debt and eventually repay it. Lower numbers mean that the company is taking on less risk. Higher numbers mean that the company is taking on greater risk. In this case, we don't really know exactly how to interpret this because we don't know what the comparable companies and their debt levels look like. These look like fairly high numbers, but again, in this industry, they may not be unusual. These would be more concerning if we were looking at the market value of the company's equity rather than its book value right here. But as it stands, we're not quite sure how to interpret these without additional information. Normally with metrics like net debt and total debt, you divide by EBITDA to adjust for company sizes. If one company has 10,000 of debt and another company has 1,000 of debt, it doesn't really matter if the first company is also 10 times bigger than the other company. So you always have to adjust for size when you're looking at these types of metrics. Let's go to the last part now and talk about liquidity ratios in real life for Illinois Toolworks. So to put everything in context, we can calculate these ratios for the company over three years. Let's actually go in right now and extend what we have here and just copy and paste this in Excel and go back these two years so we have it right here. Now, the first conclusions from these numbers is that since the current ratio, quick ratio, and cash ratio are all falling, we can say that the company's liquidity has indeed declined over this period. If you look at why this has happened, it's mostly because their cash balance has fallen and their short-term debt has risen. If you look at their cash balance, it's down from 2.5 billion to 700 million. Current liabilities though are up from 2.5 or 2.6 billion to about 4.4 billion. And if you look at the financials, you can see that the short-term debt in just the past year has roughly doubled from about 700 or 800 million to more like 1.6 billion. So this is definitely concerning. Another conclusion we can draw is that this company is fairly capital intensive in terms of what it needs to keep in working capital and then reinvest to fund future growth because working capital is always 15 to 20% of revenue. The change in working capital as a percent of the change in revenue here is always negative. Overall, it is a fairly capital intensive business as you would expect for a manufacturing company. And then the third conclusion is that the long-term funding is fairly stable. And I'm saying that because debt to total capital is around 70%. 
net debt to net capital is in the 60 to 70 percent range each year so it's not like these are going up or down all in one direction or the other they're staying in a relatively stable range over time so those would be our quick conclusions in short i would say here that there are some short-term concerning signs with this company but the long-term picture seems fine also in fiscal 2020 right when COVID began, a lot of companies had artificially higher liquidity numbers because of the fact that many companies raised extra debt or extra capital that they wouldn't necessarily need right away. So we'd like to go back and we'd like to look at something like maybe five years before this or even 10 years or 15 years before this and see how these ratios have evolved over this period. Because if we just look at three years, this could disguise some type of dramatic event that took place in fiscal 2020 to all companies that distorted these numbers and made them much higher than they normally are. So that's about it for this tutorial. To do a quick summary now, the top three liquidity ratios, the original ones that everyone refers to are the current ratio defined as current assets over current liabilities, the quick ratio, cash plus AR over current liabilities, and then the cash ratio, cash over current liabilities. And these all give you a picture of how well the company can repay its short-term obligations with its short-term assets or its most liquid assets. Unofficial liquidity ratios include working capital over revenue, the change in working capital divided by the change in revenue, and then net debt, debt to total capital, and net debt to net capital, telling you how capital intensive the company is on an everyday basis and also on a longer term basis in terms of its long-term debt and equity. Is it relatively stable? Is it taking on too much debt or too little debt? And so on. And then we did some real life analysis for Illinois Tool Works. There are some short term concerning signs here because of these huge drops in liquidity, but we don't know how distorted the original numbers, the starting numbers here are. Also, the long term picture here seems fine from what we can tell. That's it for this tutorial. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about these ratios, how to calculate them and how to interpret them in real life.